like what we're doing here at Cube for Two, click the like and subscribe button to let us know. Also, Cube for Two is a TCG player affiliate. Use the link in the show notes for all your shopping needs and help support the channel. All right, guys, let's get started. What's good, Cubers? It's your boy, Matt. I'm back, and, well, before we get started, thank you. I had a new job last month. I was working 60, 70-something hours a week. It was insane. The money was good, but my time, what's your time worth, boys and girls? And, well, any of, anyway, several of you sent uh, messages of encouragement to me, and I appreciate them. I quit that job. <laughs> My time is worth more than that, and so now I've got time for my wife and my kids and for you guys too. So with that being said, let's record a video that I started weeks ago. This week's video is answering a question from our boy, Benny Bartz. He says, hey, I hope you're well. Can you consider doing a video on how to support five color draft themes in Cube? Looking forward to drafting post lockdown. Now, that question is a little vague, so I did ask for clarification. Do you mean five color good stuff? Or do you mean a draft environment where we can play Chamber Sentry? Actually, I was kind of hoping he'd say the latter. That would be a pretty sweet cube. But instead, he said, I was thinking five color good stuff. So let's talk a little bit about five color good stuff inside our cubes. Now, my boy Zolthux has a fantastic meme for helping you draft five color good stuff. And it looks something like this. Now, I... Daddy, what does that spell? Um, uh, it spells os, os hit. Yeah, it spells os hit. Okay, I'm gonna go play. All right, bye, babe. Yeah, family channel. It spells os hit. So <laughs> the meme, as silly as it looks, is actually pretty spot on for drafting a five color good stuff style of deck. In fact, I've even spoken to my boy Usman about it, and he says, I tend to draft those kind of decks when people aren't eating their vegetables in draft. Now, you might be thinking, Matt, why would I bother drafting the five color good stuff deck? This is Jonathan Brostoff's deck from the SCG 10K Cube Invitational that won. We're gonna come back to this deck in a minute, but just know that winners can frequently draft five color good stuff, and there's nothing anyone at the table can do about it. So this is the way you draft five color good stuff. Your number one priority is the most busted card available. If there is a card that is super busted, way better than everything else, you have to draft it over everything else. So this includes all aspects of power if you're in a vintage environment, or cards like Oko and Jace the Mind Sculptor if you're in a legacy environment. These cards are better than every other card in the cube, and you have to prioritize them first. After that, we are drafting a five color good stuff deck, which means you need to prioritize fetch lands and then dual lands. Fetch lands actually make this deck work better than dual lands, so you need to make sure you take them and dual lands over everything else. We have to have a smooth banner base. You only want to run five to four basics right in that range. Then you take mana rocks. These will help fix your colors. Is it Signet ramps you and fixes your colors? And it doesn't matter if you only have a plains and a forest to cast it. Now your colors are fixed in two more colors and you've ramped. So Signets, other cheap mana rocks are very important to this deck as well. Lastly, you just want to take generically good cards. This is the other main reason to be in this deck. We're mana fixed. We've got ramp that mana fixes. Now we can play any card we want. Let's do some quick math. There are 10 two-color guilds in a cube. There are eight drafters. If nobody is cutting anybody, at least two guilds are wide open. This means that all the best gold cards from those guilds just wheel the table back to you and you have the resources to cast them. Also, you can now pluck the best gold cards from the other guilds as they wheel late in the pack as well. Plus, you can play 
any card from any other color. So you see a Gideon of a Gideon ally of Zendikar, you can scoop him up and draft him. If you see Elspeth Sons Nemesis, you can scoop her up and draft him. You can play Garrick Relentless. You know, because your mana is five colors and it's held together by fetch lands, dual lands, and signet talisman style mana rocks, you can play the best cards in every color, which gives you a unprecedented advantage in normal gameplay. Now the next thing you're looking for is just cheap spot removal. That's just ways for you to interact with your opponent to slow them down while you fix your mana if you need to or to remove their best threats. A lot of times in cube, gold removal just wheels around the table if the guild is open. So a lot of times really strong gold spot removal is going to be available to you. And then you want to prioritize mass removal as well. Mass removal is how you slow the game down. The secret hidden trick to the five color good stuff deck is a lot of time it's a semi control deck that finishes the game with planeswalkers or other engines that just produce value over time. Let me show you a deck that Sir Funchalot drafted out of my cube and we'll talk about it a little bit. So this is his deck. Look at the left, he's got 12 non-basic lands in this deck. He's a little short on fetch lands, but otherwise his mana fixing is very, very strong. In fact, when he's finished, he's only gonna have to run four basic lands, which is nuts when you think about it. This is what Usman means when he says other drafters aren't eating their vegetables. If people are not taking their lands highly, the five color good stuff deck is wide open. That's, that's kind of all you need to know. It's viable in almost every cube environment as long as other people are not prioritizing lands the way they should, and then suddenly you can play the best cards in every color. Furthermore, because of his mana base, he's able to play nine different gold cards that either wield the table or he plucked early. Note he's still got Day of Judgment in the four mana slot as a board wipe, along with Supreme Verdict and some spot removal with Flame Tongue Kavu. He's got Toxic Deluge, so he's got three or four board wipes along with lots of spot removal. And this is the only deck where you're gonna see a card like Doretti played with Hydroid Crisis, played with Nicobolus, played with Soren. You get to play all the best cards. I know you all already spotted that Oko hiding there in the middle. So this deck is ridiculous. The only thing it's really missing is a fetch land or two to tie it all together. Now, let's go look at Jonathan Brostov's deck that we were talking about earlier. So first, Brostov prioritized the most powerful cards he saw in the draft. Thus, he has Oko, Library, and Time Walk, because we are in Vintage Cube here and there is power available. I guess he didn't open any of it, but still, Time Walk, Library, and Oko is pretty dece. This is what I mean when I say you need to go ahead and pick up the busted cards, because cards like Oko, Time Walk, and Library are not going to wheel around the table. The next thing I told you to do was to pick up mana fixing. Well, he's got plenty of it. He's got fetches, he's got dual lands, he's even got a couple of the man lands because remember, this deck is a pseudo controly kind of deck, which lets him play man lands as possible finishers later. It gives him something to do with his mana. After that, we play mana ramp. Oh, well. We don't have much mana ramp. So after that, we have to go to just generically good cards, and he is playing several of those. In fact, Brostoff will tell you that Thraben Inspector is one of his most underrated white one drops. He loves that card. Wall of Omens Cantrips, Brazen Borrower has two cards stapled to it. Angel of Invention floods the board. Phantasmal Image is a fantastic cube card as well. So we're playing all of those, and then next we draft Cheap Spot Removal. And he's got plenty of that. Assassin's Trophy, Council's Judgment, Vindicate, Doomblade, and even Duress to an extent, Grant Brostoff the ability to interact with his opponent early and often and remove their threats. In particular, I love Trophy, Judgment, and Vindicate because they give him play against his opponent's Planeswalkers, against any permanent that's bothering him. So all of these cards are excellent, and then I told you to prioritize Wraths if you could, and so here you'll note that Brostoff is playing Day of Judgment, Damnation, and Wrath of God. These cards allow him to win off of engine cards because he sweeps the table. Cards like Gideon, Ophiomancer, these cards let him win 
over the long term of the game, their engines constantly generating value, not to mention Oko right above Gideon. So this is the benefit of being in the five color good stuff deck. Now you'll notice that he is actually playing seven basic lands and that's my only gripe with this deck. Rostov's deck is sick. This deck was stupid and his opponent in the final round of the tournament had Grizzlebrand on the field, drew seven cards off of it twice and still could not handle everything that Jonathan brought. So hats off to him and this is why boys and girls, this is why you play the five color good stuff deck. Well, that's going to do it for today, Cubers. Drop us a comment in the uh, comments below if there's a topic you'd like us to cover because I got a little bit of free time now. I can have a life again. So we hope to make more content for you soon, and I look forward to seeing you next week. And until then, shuffle up and keep cubing, my friends.